Hi there, the following video will cover the installation of a pedal assist sensor and configuration of the Cycle Analyst version 3. Hi, one great feature of the version 3 Cycle Analyst is the ability to add automatic pass control to any e-bike system. Pass stands for pedal assist sensor and it's an inexpensive way of having an electric bicycle automatically power when you turn the pedal cranks. A pass sensor will typically consist of a ring of magnets mounted onto the chain ring of a bicycle with a pickup sensor that senses when those magnets are moving when you rotate the pedals. The more magnets you have on your pass sensor disc, the quicker the sensor is able to respond to changes in your pedal speed. Now we're going to step through the process of configuring a version 3 cycle analyst to work with the standard uh, 12 magnet pass sensor offered by Grin Technologies. So here we've installed the split ring magnet disc on the left side of the bicycle crank and the pickup sensor is located just behind the magnets with the sensor location in line with the magnet positions. You can check that the alignment is correct because as I rotate the crank the LED light turns on and off. The pass sensor wire routes up to the cycle analyst where it plugs in to the five connector pin uh, labeled pass with the pass input. Now that we have the pass sensor physically installed on the bicycle, we're going to step through the process of configuring the cycle analyst to respond in auto pass mode. We enter the setup menu with the long press of the left button and scroll to the screen that says setup pass sensor. The second line here summarizes the current pass configuration. The most important details are the P and D up down arrows just after the number of pass poles. These arrows show the actual voltage on the pass sensor inputs and should toggle up and down as the cranks are rotated. Here I am now turning the cranks forwards. You'll notice how the D arrow follows the P arrow up and down. If I now rotate the cranks backwards, the P arrow is following the D arrow. It's through the timing of these transitions that the cycle analyst is able to tell the difference between forwards and reverse pedaling. To enter the pass setup menu, we press and hold the right button and we're presented with all the configuration settings. The first of these is the number of pass poles, which in the case of a magnet ring sensor like we have is just the number of magnets on the disc. Since we have a 12 magnet sensor, we'll leave it at the default value of 12. The next item here is the direction polarity, and this is where we tell the cycle analyst which is your forwards and reverse pedaling directions. This setting will be different if you install the pass sensor on the left or the right crank. In our case, the D arrow followed the P arrow when pedaling forwards, and this corresponds to 5 volts reverse polarity. If instead the P arrow followed the D arrow, we would change this to 5 volt forwards polarity. If you get this wrong, then it's obvious because the cycle analyst pass mode will work when you pedal backwards, but won't do anything when you pedal forwards. The next screen is the pedal assist sensor type. On the setup menu you saw that both the P and the D were toggling. That's because this pass sensor has two signal wires to detect the pedal rotation. All the Grin pass sensors are of this nature. If you use a third party pass sensor, typically there will only be one wire for the signal to go through. In that case you would choose the one wire option and on the setup menu screen you would only see the P arrow go up and down. The D would stay stationary. The next two screens here are the start and stop RPM thresholds and we really recommend leaving them at their default values in your initial configuration. The next thing is to tell the cycle analyst in what pass mode to operate and this is how we get the bike to actually respond to pedal sensing. Currently the default configuration has pedal assist off. We want to switch this over and select auto pass. Auto pass means it's automatically going to power the bike when you're pedaling. The next option in this pass menu setup is the amount of watts that the bike will deliver once you start pedaling. Typically, uh, you would set this somewhere between 400 to 500 watts, which provides a nice amount of background assistance whenever you pedal, and you can use a throttle to get higher power levels if desired. This last configuration is really just for European legislation that requires throttle assist bikes to only work when you're pedaling but they provide an exemption for low speeds below 6 km an hour where the throttle can work without pedaling. For most people, you should leave it at the default high value of 99 km an hour so that your throttle will always work regardless of your pedal status. Yeah. 
now with all of those things configured as we have, auto pass uh, operation mode with the right number of magnet poles, the bike should automatically power whenever I hop on and turn the pedals. Now that all the configuration is set up, when we're pedaling the bicycle, we should see our pedal assist indicator, these two bars on the left, moving up and down, and the bicycle automatically running whenever you pedal and turn the cranks. So now we're going to turn the cranks on the bike, you can see the pass symbol on the left, and the motor kicking at full speed. Once I stop pedaling, the motor cuts out. Now that the basic configuration of the cycle analyst is complete, you will hopefully find the pedal assist characteristics to your liking. If not, here are some additional settings and tips that will allow you to customize the throttle response and overall pedal assist system feel. Now that we have the pass sensor up and running, there are several other advanced tunings that can help tweak the behavior just the way you like it in several of the other setup menu options. So, oops. Press and hold a little bit longer to get to the setup menu. Uh, so the most important of these is in the throttle output setup menu. And specifically, the throttle output up ramp rate. This determines how quickly the motor will accelerate. If the bike kicks in too aggressively once you start to pedal, then you can smooth it out quite effectively by decreasing the throttle output up ramp rate. The normal range would be somewhere between 0.2 to 10 um, volts per second. And for a high power e-bike setup, usually you'll find something on the order of 0.3 to 0.5 being about the sweet spot for a really smooth and steady acceleration as you pedal. Another important input for most people's configurations will be the auxiliary setup on the cycle analyst. So on this bike here, we've installed, a little hard to see, a three position switch that lets us control how much assistance we get while we're riding. So if you want that three position switch to configure for pedal assistance, we enter the aux potentiometer menu, enable the auxiliary function of limits, because we're going to adjust our pedal assist limit, and then for the limit that we want to scale, we're going to scale the pedal assist. So not the speed limit, not the power limit, but the pass level. Okay. And now you can see when the middle position of the switch I get 49% of my pass, position 3 I get basically 100%, and when I have my switch in the 1 position I get no assist, so it would become a throttle only controlled bicycle. Another important advanced parameter you may need to tweak is the power gain in the setup power limits menu. Specifically W gain right here. If the motor surges up and down when you're pedaling, then you might want to reduce this from the default value of 15 down to perhaps 5 or 10. But if you go too low, the assistance output may become a bit sluggish at reaching your target power. The default of 15 is pretty good for most bike setups in the 500 to 1500 watt power range. So the last settings you may want to tweak to fine tune the pass response are in the pass sensor menu, and these are the start and stop thresholds that I earlier told you to leave at their default values. The start threshold determines how soon the pedal assist engages when you start to pedal from a standstill. The lower the RPM, in theory, the quicker the pass should start off as you're starting from a stop, but if you go to a low value and you start to pedal then stop pedaling right away, the motor will continue to run for a few seconds, so there's a nice trade-off to find there. The stop threshold is the same thing at the other end of the spectrum, so this determines at what speed the pedal assist cuts out when you're already up to speed in pedaling the bike. As I have it now, once my cadence drops below 17 RPM, the pedal assistance will cut out. If you have too low of a value here, you'll experience some delay from when you stop pedaling to when the motor itself actually cuts out, which can become a bit disconcerting. And there we have it. We've now tuned and tweaked the pedal assist response for this bicycle just the way that we want it. Okay. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments or feedback, please email us at info at ebikes.ca.